Hi everyone, myself Naivetha Ravi, working as assistant professor in the Department of Cyber Security and Data Science in MLR Institute of Technology. Today, I am going to discuss about the topic two-phase locking protocol. And my overview of presentation includes about two-phase locking protocol and types of two-phase locking protocol. So, this is one of the concurrency control protocols and the lock basic protocols. Previously, we have discussed about shared and exclusive locks. So, this is another type of locking protocol that is two-phase locking protocol. Let us discuss what is two-phase locking protocol. It is also known as shortly 2PL, two-phase locking protocol, right, 2PL. The two-phase locking protocol divides execution phase of a transaction into three parts. So, what are those three parts? In the first part, when the execution of a transaction starts, whenever we want to execute a transaction, then it seeks permission for the lock it requires. That means it will ask the permission. Okay. In the second part, the transaction acquires all the locks. The first part is to ask the permission for the locks. The second part is to acquire the locks. And the third phase is to start as soon as the transaction releases its first lock. Third phase is all about releasing locks one by one, which has been acquired in the second phase okay so in the third phase the transaction cannot demand any new locks so third phase is only meant for releasing locks one by one it will not allow to acquire the locks it only releases the acquired locks so the two phase locking protocol allows each transaction to make lock or unlock the request in two steps so what are those two steps that is growing phase and second one is shrinking phase so, what is growing phase? In this phase, the transaction may obtain locks but may not release any locks. Growing phase means here, here this is what growing. It will obtain, acquire a lock. Okay. So, what is shrinking phase? This is what shrinking phase. That means whatever the locks acquired here. So, this is the lock acquired. For example, shared lock. This is exclusive lock. This is shared lock. Okay. So, here, this is what we called as growing phase, acquiring the locks. What is shrinking phase? Releasing the locks. Whatever the lock here we have acquired, that will be released here. So, release share lock and here release exclusive lock and here release share lock again. This is what we called as shrinking phase. This is what we called as growing phase. Okay. Let us discuss these two. With a simple example. See here the diagrammatic representation. The first, here we have three phases, right? What are those three phases? First one, acquiring locks. That means asking for lock. Second one is acquiring the locks, right? Third one is releasing the locks. These are the three phases. In these three phases, asking can be done, right? The main two phases is acquiring the locks and releasing the locks. So, here which we have acquired a lock here and which we have acquired a, this is what we called as growing phase okay and the locks has been acquired at this particular moment of time the lock has been acquired the dba granted the locks whatever we have asked okay later on whatever the lock here we have acquired that will be released one by one that we called as what we called as shrinking phase okay so, this is what we called as growing phase, acquiring. This is what we called as shrinking phase. This is what we have the, which we called as locked phase. We have three types of two-phase locking protocols. So, what are those three types? Strict 2PL, which is also called as here strict 2PL. Strict two-phase locking protocol, rigorous two-phase locking protocol and conservative two-phase locking protocol. These are the three types. Strict 2PL, rigorous 2PL and conservative 2PL. These are the three types of locking protocols. Let us discuss the first one, strict 2PL. It is just like 2PL, right? The first phase of strict 2PL is similar to 2PL. That means whatever uh, the two-phase locking protocol is there. 
So, in this first phase, after acquiring all the logs, the transaction continues to execute normally. That means, after acquiring all the logs, the transaction continues to execute normally. The only difference between 2PL and strict 2PL is that strict 2PL does not release a log after using it. That means, in strict 2PL, step by step releasing will not be done. The releasing of all the logs will be done at a time. Okay. So, strict 2PL waits until the whole transaction to commit and then it releases all the logs at a time. Let us discuss this one with a simple example. For example, here I am performing R of A. R of A means here I have I have acquired shared log. Why? Because I am performing only read operation. Okay. Next, R of B, W of B. For this here, I must acquire which log? Exclusive log. Why? Because here I am performing read and write both the operations. That is why here I have to acquire exclusive log. So, after in 2PL, if at all 2PL means here after acquiring, first of all, it will release. It will release what? One of the logs, any of the logs, it will release. For example, in first step, it will release. Right. So, unlock B. Unlock B. Then, in the second shrinking phase, unlock A. In 2PL, it will happen in 2PL. But in strict 2PL, but in strict 2PL, no shrinking phase. Just it will be all locks will be released at a time. That means, here after performing all the transactions, then the locks will be released at a time. That is what here, strict 2PL. See here in strict 2PL, locks are attained. Processing will be done. Processing will be done. Then those are all will be released at the same time. That is what strict 2PL is meant for. So, here strict 2PL avoids cascaded rollbacks. So, what is cascaded rollbacks here? Cascading rollbacks means we have discussed this one in our previous sessions. But anyways, I will let you know. So, here I am going to perform read of A, write of A. Okay. Without committing I used to perform right of A without committing I used to perform here also right of A that means I want um, I am updating and later on by due to some issues it has been failed the first transaction has been failed whatever the data has been read and updated here is from T1 right again this data has been read and updated from T2 right so, here dependency exists. Later on, T1 has been failed due to some software issues or else power failures. Then it will be aborted and rolled back. It will be aborted and rolled back. So, this is what we call as cascaded rollbacks. This situation will be avoided in strict 2PL. Why? Because so it will not allow, it will not allow to write or read until unless the logs will be released, until unless or else the whole transactions will be done here. Then only it will allow the other transactions. That means we are avoiding cascading rollbacks. That is the point here. This protocol not only requires two-phase locking, but also all exclusive locks should be held until the transaction commits or abort. So, it must not allow these two to read or write. Why? Because it will be held until the transaction commits or rollbacks. Next, it is not a deadlock free. Here comes the concept deadlock. So, what is deadlock here? So, if at all I have two processes, processor 1 and processor 2. So, processor 1 is using resource R1. Okay. Processor 2 is using resource R2. And here, this processor 1, it is using R1, right? And it is asking for R2, but it is not releasing R1. Still, it is using and it is asking for R2. The same situation. Here, processor P2, it is using R2. It wants R1, but it is not releasing R2. So, this is the situation where we struck. That means, this situation is called as deadlock. The other transaction will not use that particular data item which has been locked by that particular transaction. That is what the situation we called as 
deadlock okay so it is not deadlock free that means here deadlock will occur it ensures that if data is being modified by one transaction then other transaction cannot read it until the first transaction commits that will be that assurance will be given okay that means when only if the first transaction releases or commits then only it will allow the other transaction to read or update a particular data item okay most of the database systems implement rigorous two phase locking protocol rigorous means that is the next locking protocol okay so what is rigorous to pl a transaction can acquire logs on a data items whenever it requires whenever it requires so here this type of uh, transaction will acquire only in growing phase during its execution okay it has a growing phase it doesn't have shrinking phase it has a whenever it require uh, a logs that will be acquired but it doesn't have shrinking phase okay it doesn't ensure deadlock free schedule that means it also consists of deadlock in rigorous 2pl a transaction only reads a value of committed transaction so what in rigorous 2pl the transaction only reads from the other transaction if at all the other transaction commits that date particular data item that is what here rigorous 2pl next what is conservative 2pl transaction has to acquire logs on all the data items it requires before the transaction begins its execution so if at all we want to execute a particular operations then we must acquire the logs for that particular operations that we are going to perform it doesn't have growing phase so in rigorous 2pl we have growing phase but we doesn't have shrinking phase so here this is the opposite here we doesn't have growing phase okay why because all logs must be all logs must be acquired before the transaction has been executed no growing phase it has only shrinking phase why because here we are acquiring all the logs at a time and later on we used to release the log one by one that is what we call as shrinking phase so it ensures that the schedule granted would be serializable and deadlock free so here there is no question of deadlock and in conservative 2pl a transaction can read a value of a uncommitted transaction so here a transaction t1 can read a value it can read a value from an uncommitted transaction okay so that is what the main differences between strict 2pl rigorous 2pl and conservative 2pl so what we have discussed in this particular session about two phase locking protocol which is one of the concurrency control protocols that too in log based protocols so in log based protocols we have we have seen so what is the first one shared and exclusive lock and the second one is two phase locking protocol and what is two phase locking protocol here we have three steps first we have to request for the locks in first step in second step we have to acquire the locks in third step we have to release the locks this acquiring and releasing this is what we called as growing phase this is what we called as shrinking phase this is about 2pl okay what we have different types of 2pl the first one is strict 2pl second one is rigorous 2pl and third one is conservative 2pl this we have discussed in this session thank you